What is a phone for gamers exactly? Is it a no compromises mobile experience for the most discerning of consumers? Or is it a mediocre, expensive product that hides its flaws behind flashy marketing and an eye-catching industrial design? Maybe, just maybe, it can be a little bit of both. Today's video is brought to you by Sennheiser. Their PXC 550 wireless headphones feature up to 30 hours of battery life, noise guard hybrid adaptive noise cancellation, and more. Learn more at the link below. The Razer phone, both on paper and in practice, is one of the fastest mobile devices on the market with highlight specifications including a totally insane Snapdragon 835 processor, truly insane performance, an insane 8, eight gigabytes, gigabytes of RAM, RAM, and an Adreno 540 GPU that I think could only be described as insane. insane. All right. Uh, okay, Razer. So back on Earth, none of those things would actually get you strapped into a straitjacket. And in fact, all of them can be found on the cheaper OnePlus 5T. So I guess it's my job then to help the average consumer differentiate between your phone's totally normal features and its standout ones. That's fine. The first thing they did well was cooling. Razer is a long way away from being able to design and or fabricate its own mobile processors like giants Apple and Samsung do. So to differentiate from competitors, all they can really do is get the most out of the generally available parts on the market. And they did just that. The performance difference between the Razer phone and another phone is totally sane. Insane performance. But it's also measurable. I wouldn't personally notice this kind of a bump in day-to-day -day usage, but I would never say no to free performance. The second thing they did well is the battery. In spite of Razer's choice of an impressive, but neither insane nor unprecedented 4,000 milliamp hour battery, they've actually taken some flack over benchmarks like screen on time. But as someone who relies on a more anecdotal approach to phone battery longevity, I had no problems with it at all. And even with the screen configured to 120 Hertz, the Razer phone lasted me through even the most demanding days with lots of GPS navigation and video watching. Leading us to the third thing that Razer did well, and not as well, the screen. The good is that the 2560 by 1440 120 Hertz panel from Sharp is a total game changer. I already experienced this kind of fluidity with the iPad Pro, but a high refresh rate display when used with variable refresh rate technology to keep unnecessary screen updates from sucking back battery while you're just staring at a static screen not doing anything is a pure no compromises solution. It's insane, for real this time. Other than some stutters now and then that I hope Razer can continue to tune in future firmware updates, animations and scrolling are so much smoother that because of the additional responsiveness, you would swear that the device is more than just marginally faster thanks to a beefy cooling solution. The bad though, is that other than the refresh rate, nothing about the screen stands out. Compared to an OLED, we do lose the burn-in concerns, but it can't display a clock or notifications all the time by illuminating only the necessary pixels. Compared to a more color-focused LCD, it's not especially bright, and this is actually a big one for me, compared to some of the ultra-wide aspect ratio displays that are out there now, the Razer phone wastes far more of its face on bezels and on-screen buttons. Though maybe waste is an unfair word. Call quality on the handset in particular was pretty unexceptional, but when it came to playing games or watching movies, that wasted speaker space was an absolute godsend. Now I went out of my way to praise the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL for their spectacular front-facing speakers, even though it did cost us a headphone jack. And Razer is going to get the exact same treatment here. Great speakers, guys. Wish it had a headphone jack. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. And the skin is actually another highlight. They're using a nearly stock Android skin that seems to kind of borrow from the OnePlus playbook. 
Nothing Razer added feels like bloat, and their Game Booster, which lets you tune performance versus battery life on a per game basis, is pretty cool. So no complaints here, other than the usual warning that comes from buying a low volume Android phone. The expediency of Razer's software updates and how long you can expect to get them on their first generation product are both unknown quantities at this time. And that isn't the only buyer beware statement that I've got about this phone. Here are a few more in no particular order. One, it's not waterproof. For careful people, this might not be a huge deal, but IP67 ingress protection is quickly becoming industry standard, and this omission is made worse by number two. The Razer phone's ergonomics are not great. I understand why they went with this blocky shape. It's cheaper and it gives them much more internal space for heat pipes and batteries compared to a phone that's similar in size on paper like the Pixel 2 XL, but curvier. But the holdability drawbacks compared to devices with a more natural hand-like shape are something that stood out to me. Three, Razer says the camera is going to improve a lot. And it might. But right now, the best thing I can say about it is that it actually is capable of capturing decent or even pretty good pictures. The worst thing I can say about it is that the camera app is best replaced with a third party one off the Play Store, the low light performance is not very good, and that I haven't experienced shutter lag like this in years. It's just not very competitive right now. And if all I had to go on was my knowledge of Razer's long-term support of their first-gen products and how difficult the software tuning required to get even identical hardware up to par with Apple and Samsung or even OnePlus would be, I'd have to say I sincerely doubt that it will get there before work on a new uh, Snapdragon 845 based new Razer phone starts sucking up all of Razer's dev time. Which brings us to the last buyer beware, price. When a new Razer product comes out. <laughs> to its credit, the Razer phone is significantly less expensive than other top tier flagships like the iPhone 10 and Galaxy Note 8. But compared to the next level down kind of second tier flagships like the Galaxy S8, uh, iPhone 8, OnePlus 5T, its flaws become much harder to overlook. So bottom line then, I'm not switching to the Razer phone, but Razer has still done something insane remarkable here that is especially remarkable given that this is their first attempt. They've managed to create an identity for this product line that gets me pretty excited for where they're gonna take it in the future. It might not be great at everything, but it's the best at something, butter smooth gaming. And that is a lot more than most Me Too phone manufacturers can say. Speaking of Me Too, if you guys noticed the sexy D brand skin on our Razer phone and you thought, I gotta get me one of them too, then uh, head over to the link in the video description. D brand creates awesome vinyl skins for laptops, phones, tablets, consoles, controllers, and more. They use high quality, authentic 3M vinyl on every product and their cut is so precise. They measure many times to ensure that they have a factory fit for your product. And not only do the skins look great, D brand skins protect against incidental scuffs and scratches. And they have recently announced their D-Brand Grip Case, the grippiest case ever. So head over to the link in the video description. They ship worldwide, their products are affordable, and their configurator lets you see exactly what it's gonna look like before you click buy. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. We spent an insane amount of money. An insane, an insane, but it's insane. Insane, insane, it's insane, insane performance. All right, it's got truly insane performance. Insane, but an insane, the insane, but insane, an insane, an insane, insane. Isn't that insane? Just insane, 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 that insane.